Hello and welcome back to Pick Some Portraits. As mentioned in our recent look at festive retrofuturism during the Soviet era in Russia, many of the secular traditions associated with Christmas were moved to New Year's. This was on account of the government's banning religious holidays. However, despite the holiday more or less being outlawed, media was still produced around Christmas themes and iconography. Today, we are going to be looking at how this was reflected in animation. Uh, now, this is by no means exhaustive. I have found a selection of festive Soviet animation spanning decades. But first, I'd like to take a look at some of the Christmas traditions in Russia before the revolution and how and why they were moved to New Year's. Christianity and Christmas was brought to Kiev and Rus, the cultural predecessor to Russia, in 988 when Vladimir the Great, ruler of Kievan Rus, converted to the religion. The period that followed is known as the Baptism of Rus, where the residents of the capital Kiev were baptized and symbols of Slavic paganism purged. A lot of the traditions we in the West associate with Christmas came to Russia by way of Germany in the 19th century, including a decorated tree, the Tannenbaum, as well as an annual gift giver. Their answer to Saint Nick or Santa Claus is Detmoros, translated to Grandpa Frost or Father Frost. He grew out of Slavic mythology and is uh, something of a wizard. He carries a staff, rides in a troika, and travels with his granddaughter Snegorochka, the snow maiden, who also acts as his assistant. Following the Soviets seizing power, Christmas and other religious holidays were abolished in 1929 as part of their state policy of atheism. We are seeing some anti Detmoros propaganda here. Christmas is the coldest, darkest time of the year, and to reward the workers of the Soviet Union, uh, you know, give them something to look forward to, the Soviet government brought back the Christmas tree in 1935. Detmoros would follow, along with other familiar traditions like uh, gift giving, uh, move to New Year's to separate it from the religious connection of Christmas. After the fall of the Soviet Union, which happened on Christmas in 1991, the holiday was reinstated and Christmas is still observed uh, by some religious sects on December 25th, while the Russian Orthodox Church celebrates it uh, on the 7th of January, uh, just the way that their calendar lines up. Um, but again, most of the festive secular traditions are centered around New Year's. Now we covered Olga Karatava and Peter Novzov's New Year's Eve in our Festive Retrofuturism video. The design of this Det Moros was borrowed from 1937's Father Frost and the Grey Wolf. This was the earliest piece of animation I could find, uh, also directed by Karatava. It features Det Moros interacting with a bunch of woodland creatures, <laughs> which you will notice is the theme uh, of a lot of what we're going to be looking at. Here they are rabbits that sets out for a New Year's tree, leaving one of the rabbits home alone. Uh, a wolf tries to break into the rabbit's home, but it is too smart to fall for that. The wolf changes up its strategy, dressing as Detmoros. The rabbit falls for this, gets kidnapped, and the wolf flees, passing the real Detmoros, who pursues him. Uh, the wolf gets away, though the rabbit manages to escape. It is then reunited with Detmoros and the other rabbits. Uh, the group goes to the wolf's house and uh, force it to help them carry their tree back home, leaving it outside while they uh, decorate it and uh, celebrate. They have a party. The wolf asks to come in. Det says no. Wolf grabs a rabbit and is blown away into a freezing lake, presumably to its death. Father Frost and the Grey Wolf would be remade in 1978 by Vitold Bordzelowski. This retelling is much more padded and softer, both aesthetically and in tone. This time the wolf has a sidekick, a crow that distracts Dead Morose, so the wolf can steal the toys meant for the forest animals. There is also a cameo by the Snowman Postman, or Soviet Frosty, who we will be talking about in a bit. I am going to be saying this a lot, but this is absolutely gorgeous. From the colors used to the character design and animation, this short is beautiful. Interesting to note, the Grey Wolf's appearance here greatly resembles the wolf from New Pagode. No discussion on Soviet animation will be complete without talking about New Pagode. This series uh, had the very simple premise of a wolf trying to catch a hare. Think Roadrunner, Wile E. Coyote, uh, or Itchy and Scratchy, where the predator repeatedly fails in capturing its prey. 
It spanned decades from the 1960s into the 21st century uh, and was extremely beloved. Uh, the wolf character here could even be thought of as Russia's answer to Mickey Mouse. Uh, the show was just that popular. In 1974, New Pagody celebrated New Year's with a festive special. It takes place during a New Year recital, as well as a skating rink, uh, or a pond, and a ski hill. This is uh, where the action climaxes, with the wolf falling from the ski lift and getting caught in an avalanche. Amazing soundtrack here, uh, great vibe. <laughs> if, uh, if you've never uh, experienced New Pagody, this series is great. Traveling back in time to the early 50s, we have the Brumberg sisters The Night Before Christmas, 1951. The Brumbergs, Valentina and Zenaida, were incredibly important to the development of Soviet animation. Along with Ivan Ivanovano, they pioneered the industry, and The Night Before Christmas is one of their best known works. Now, uh, this is very different uh, than the poem A uh, Visit from St. Nicholas, which is commonly referred to as The Night Before Christmas. Uh, you know, happy Christmas to all, all the good night. There is no Santa Claus here. Instead, this is an adaptation of the Nikolai Gogol story, Christmas Eve, published in 1832. It features a devil, a witch, and a blacksmith who sets out to get the shoes of the queen because that is a condition placed on him by the woman he loves. Uh, if he wants to marry her, he needs to get the shoes. <laughs> the Night Before Christmas is somehow the most bizarre thing we're going to be looking at today. This was produced with the use of rotoscoping. Uh, there was also some really interesting lighting effects as well. Uh, it's gorgeously produced. Again, it looks amazing. <laughs> I know that it is before the Soviet Union, but just because it's too weird not to include, Gogol's story was also adapted by Ladislaw Sterovich, who was the subject of our Halloween episode a few years ago. From 1913, uh, this is a silent film, live action with some stop motion, that follows the story uh, with images that are absolutely nightmare inducing. <laughs> I recommend adding this into your annual Christmas rotation if you want to alienate your friends and loved ones. Back to something a little more wholesome, a little more adorable, Snowman Postman from 1955, uh, Soviet Frosty, more or less. Children want a tree for the holidays, so they write to Detmoros and build a snowman to carry their letter. It comes to life, and along with a dog, sets out to deliver the letter. Uh, on the way, the duo makes enemies of woodland creatures and befriend a bear. Uh, there is a lot of hijinks, but the letter eventually reaches Detmaros, and the children get their tree. Uh, notice the same design here that we saw earlier in Father Frost and the Grey Wolf. Uh, Frosty, or <laughs> the snowman with a bucket on his head, uh, which I think is a nice little callback. Uh, something nostalgia, uh, or something nostalgic uh, for those who grew up with it, I'm sure. Uh, this short is very charming. Uh, I love this. Moving to something just as cute, but a little more out there, we have Boris Stefansev's Nutcracker from 1973, adapted from both the Tchaikovsky Ballet as well as the source material, the short story The Nutcracker and the Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman. The story follows a young girl whose Nutcracker comes to life. She is eventually captured and the Nutcracker must defend her against the evil Mouse King. Uh, this is gorgeous and at times very psychedelic. The way it uses patterns and colors along with the music, it's uh, transfixing, hypnotic, uh, this is great. The last piece we are going to be looking at is from 1991, the same year the Soviet Union was dissolved, Vladimir Arbakov's Miss New Year. This is pretty weird. Forest animals are competing in a beauty contest that is to be determined by a supercomputer. A crow, who feels like she is ugly, is encouraged to participate, even though it's obvious a vixen fox is likely going to win. Her mother convinces her to participate, as uh, she, the mother, is a computer whiz and rigs the machine for the crow to win, which she does, but she then comes clean, and the fox is awarded the title of Miss New Year, and the crow is crowned Miss Honesty. Uh, the computer is also revealed to be a washing machine. Not much more to say on that. <laughs> Before we wrap things up, uh, I would like to just quickly look at how the New Year was celebrated outside of animation if you were to tune in uh, on television the evening of December 31st. I found clips from several different years that followed a similar format. 
this uh, this shot of the clock at the Kremlin uh, with the year in the national anthem playing. Uh, the Kremlin clock is apparently synonymous with the new year. The ringing of the chimes is uh, similar to the ball dropping <laughs> at Times Square. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. I will post links to all of these in the description if you want to check them out. Uh, again, this was not meant to be exhaustive, and I am no expert, so if there was something I missed or uh, misstate, feel free to comment or correct down below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we have a new episode of Future Film over there, looking at the festive futurism of Terry Gilliam's Brazil. $5 a month gets you access to that and dozens of other videos and keeps these videos coming out regularly. That's patreon.com slash pics and portraits. If you're in the mood for more festive content, uh, check out the Retro Features and Video if you haven't, uh, or any of our other Christmas specials. Uh, we have one on anime, <laughs> propaganda, and uh, Rankin Bass, Rudolph and Frosty. There is also a Christmas sleep court coming up later this week, but that just about wraps up our holiday content for this year. Thank you all so much for your interest and support this year. Uh, I know it hasn't been the easiest or best year for a lot of people, but knowing you see value in this, what I'm doing here means the world to me and has made this year one of my best. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and all the best for 2022. Thank you.